In at number 10, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is without a doubt a legendary comedic actor, but all of those pratfalls that he did in his youth must have really turned him into a grumpy old man. He has certainly earned himself perhaps the worst reputation in Hollywood from being just extremely difficult to work with. When it works, it works, but most of the time he is a huge pain in the you know what. When actor and comedian Rob Hubel met Chevy at the Upright Citizens Brigade show, he was so excited that he accidentally interrupted a conversation that Chevy was in. Rob was a longtime fan and just couldn't contain his joy. But Chevy responded by slapping him in the face and then said, Can you see I'm talking to somebody, kid? In at number nine, Ariana Grande. Back in 2014, a man named Dan O'Connor and his daughters, Jen and Kelly, had actually won a contest sponsored by MTV, VH1, and Pepsi to meet Ariana Grande. The contest was advertised as Pepsi, MTV, and VH1 are giving you the chance to win an amazing trip to Los Angeles to hang with Ariana and watch her perform live at this year's MTV Video Music Awards. Dan wrote about the entire experience in his blog, and one big thing that I noticed was how much Ariana had changed in the period of just three years. Apparently he and his daughters had actually met Ariana back in 2011 when she had fame from her Nickelodeon show but still had not peeked into the pop star that we know her as today. Dan described her as the nicest celebrity that he had ever met and displayed so much patience to take photos with his daughters. Unfortunately this time around it was a disaster. His daughters had to find their own transportation, they were not allowed entry when they arrived, then they waited several hours after the agreed upon time to meet Ariana and when she finally came out to see them, it got worse. She spent 15 seconds, maybe, with each contestant winner, took an approved photo after asking them to delete the first few, and then she just left. In number 8, Michael Jordan. Best known in Hollywood for his starring role in Space Jam, and a lot of people still love Michael Jordan for his basketball skills, one of his biggest fans was the rapper Chameleonaire, who actually ran into MJ at a party after a charity auction. However, when he approached Jordan for a photo, he said that this NBA legend completely shot him down. In fact, to be more specific, and according to Chameleonaire, Jordan said, I ain't taking pictures with no N-word. Then when the rapper tried to explain that he was a huge fan and had just purchased a $7,000 commemorative Michael Jordan jersey, Michael just just responded with, I'll tell you what, you pay me $15,000 right now for a jersey for me and I'll take the picture with you. What a terrible attitude. In at number 7, Christina Aguilera. Some people may not remember this, but back in 2011, Christina Aguilera was judging on The Voice and for whatever reason could not contain herself. She asked country singer Patrick Thomas, who was 20 at the time, to take his pants off three times. Apparently she doesn't get any better when her fans are famous either. Actress Valerie Bertinelli said that she once approached Aguilera to say that she thought she was a beautiful singer, to which Christina paid no attention to and replied with, yeah, whatever. And to make matters worse, she completely trashed Lady Gaga back in 2008. As reported by the LA Times, she was asked about the allegations of her stealing Gaga's image while promoting Bionic. In response, she said, you know, that's funny that you mentioned that. This person was just brought to my attention not too long ago. I'm not quite sure who this person is, to be honest honest, I don't know if it is a man or a woman, I just wasn't sure. I really don't spend any time on the internet, so I guess I live a little under a rock in that respect. A little bit, Christina. Just a, just a tad. In number 5, Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz has built up a nasty reputation of being notoriously reluctant to sign autographs and she has said that she is against interacting with her fans at all. During the premiere of the movie Sex Tape in 2014, witnesses in attendance told Radar Online that the actress could not have been less interested in the fans. The weird thing was that the premiere was meant for the fans. It's not like these people followed her into a restaurant. She was scheduled to appear. Fans showed up early, waited outside for a glimpse, and then right when she was spotted by the fans, she outright refused autographs and told them, if I did it for you, I'd have to do it for everyone. The fan that reported this info said, Cameron was as unfriendly as can be and it was really disappointing. There were literally only four or five fans waiting and asking for them when they left. It was not a huge crowd and would have taken them less time to sign an autograph or take a picture rather than giving a lecture about not doing it. Very true. In number four, Tommy Lee. This is an interesting one because Tommy Lee kind of exposed himself for being an absolute nightmare, but it was his fans that provoked him to rant about not wanting to take photos with his fans. In an open letter posted to the band's Facebook page in June of 2012, Tommy said, I fing love my fans, and you know this. If you asked anyone that knows me really well, they would tell you the same thing. Tommy loves his fans. He lives for this. Shit. He eats, breathes, shit music 24-7. They'll also probably tell you that he's a down-to-earth, grateful, life-loving dude and a nice guy too. What I have a problem with is taking pictures. I hate it. Irritates the f*** out of me when people say, you owe it to your fans. They put you where you are, etc, etc. I certainly don't owe anybody anything. When I bought all my Led Zeppelin records and concert tickets, I didn't say, one day these f***ers are gonna owe me a picture. It's the least they can do for me. WTF, people. You don't admire something so that it can give back. You just cherish it. And to those who say, you should be grateful that people 
want to take your picture, maybe one day they won't want it. That day can't come soon enough. By the way, I'm not here to take pictures with you, I'm here to entertain you. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like Tommy Lee just needs to take a nap, right? That just sounds like somebody who needs a nap. Just a quick, just a quick power nap. And then that Facebook post would have never happened. In number three, Martha Stewart. Reddit is always a nice place to read about honest accounts of meeting celebrities. And a user named Grateful Stickers posted this story and said, after waiting in line, my mother was refused an extra autograph and she also wouldn't make out the one promised autograph to anyone but the person who was getting it. Even after explaining it was for her son, Martha refused. I could maybe understand if it was after signing 5,000 autographs or even 500, but it was a small event. That's only a small part of her being a b At the very end of the event, as people were leaving, Martha Stewart was over her talking to her mother, who happened to be with her. Martha's mom said, What should we do with all these floral arrangements? To which Martha replied, We take them or throw them out. These common people don't deserve them. Far too expensive, and they wouldn't appreciate their beauty. Yep, she said common people. Oh, Martha Stewart. In number two, Stephen Morrissey. A few years before the Smiths became a band, Morrissey sent a very nasty message in response to a fan's ad in Sounds Magazine in 1980. See, a man named Robert Mackey from Scotland had submitted a letter to Morrissey. The 21-year-old star then replied with his own letter that said, Dear Pearson, so nice to know there's another soul out there, even if it is Glasgow. Does being Scottish bother you? Manchester is a lovely little place if you happen to be a bedridden deaf mute. I'm unhappy, hope you're unhappy too. In poverty, Stephen. Look, this is just a prime example of what I have said on this channel many times. When you recognize your own pain, you can see it more clearly in others. The fact that Morrissey says, I'm unhappy, hope you're unhappy too, just makes it as clear as day that he was absolutely miserable and that's why this poor fan got a miserable response. In it number nine, Ellen DeGeneres. Not only does Ellen have a mean streak with her guests, both celebrities and even her own audience, it turns out she is especially not a fan of people with disabilities. Within the Kevin Porter tweet, Josh Levesque replied with this, a friend of mine told me about a custodian custodian she knew who was fired because he was slightly autistic and forgot he wasn't allowed to look at or speak to her and he loved greeting everyone. Then there was this heartbreaking one. Lindsay Jamba tweeted, My brother is a make a wish kid. His wish was to be at the 12 Days of Ellen which was arranged one month before they cancelled because Ellen refuses to interact with disabled people. Crushed his heart. That's messed up and something you just can't ignore. In number eight, Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a freak of nature when it comes to his skills on the football field and with his big trade to Tampa Bay, the state of Florida is going to have to contain his excessive need to work out. I mean, you'd think that he'd just have a gym in his mansion, but Brady was actually caught working out in a park that was closed due to the pandemic. The best part was that when a city worker walked over to tell him that the park was closed, he thought she was just asking for an autograph, which maybe she was later on when she found out that it was Tom Brady. Either way, the city of Tampa's Twitter account even tweeted at him saying, Sorry Tom Brady, our Tampa Parks rec team can't wait to welcome you and our entire community back with even bigger smiles. Until then, stay safe and stay home as much as you can to help flatten the curve. In number 5, Jimmy Fallon. During a sketch for the NBC Tonight Show host, Jimmy Fallon apologized for doing an impersonation of fellow comic Chris Rock while in blackface during a 2000 episode of Saturday Night Live. Discussion of Jimmy's 20 year old skit surfaced after a video of it was posted online. According to entertainment trade media outlet Variety, it was posted on Twitter by a user named Chef Boy O'Dear. It showed Fallon as Chris Rock appearing on a talk show. When the clip began to go viral, many people called for Fallon to be fired from The Tonight Show altogether, although instead he just issued this lengthy apology. Fallon tweeted, In 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision and thank all of you for holding me accountable. He seems genuinely sorry for this mistake and fully aware now at least that even his fans are going to be holding him accountable. In number four, Britney Spears. Now, most of these celebrities are being exposed for something terrible that they did in the past, but for Britney, it was her conservatorship that was actually exposed by her fans. A free Britney movement had started online that claimed that the celeb was being manipulated and had not been in control of her life for the last 12 years. This was approved by the court system in 2008 after Spears had several public mental breakdowns. This decision then put her entire estate, financial assets, and some of her personal assets all under the control of her father and his lawyer. Spears was spotted driving her SUV with her son, Sean on her lap and not strapped into a car seat, she also famously shaved her head and was seen hitting a photographer's car with an umbrella. These are just a few examples for her father to take complete control over her life, but now that we are 12 years removed from these events, many fans feel that Britney should be able to handle her own personal matters. In number two, Justin Bieber. Before Justin Bieber got married to Haley Baldwin, he was infamous for hooking up with his fans. It became so well known that he would do this, hundreds of fans would figure out where his hotel was going to be and just crowd outside of the entrance. During a 
Reddit that had inquired about stories of people that have slept with rock stars, this Bieber story just happened to pop up, and upon reading it, I realized just how far Bieber was taking these fan interactions. A user named Molly Moon said, Summer of 2013, my friends and I met Justin Bieber at Music Nightclub in Toronto. One of my friends ended up leaving with Justin and his boys to go back to the Hazleton Hotel. She ended up sleeping with Justin and multiple boys from his crew. There were like five girls there and they made them all sign contracts and took away their cell phones. He referred to himself as JB and made everyone sit around and listen to him sing for like an hour while he continuously smoked a shit ton of weed. I don't know what's worse, the fact that he took away their cell phones or the fact that he made them sit around and listen to him sing. Starting off this countdown, we have Toby Maguire. Haven't heard much about him lately, I wonder what he's up to. But anyways, back in 2008, Toby was in Paris headed back to his hotel when a fan walking beside him held out his camera to take a photo with Toby. Well, he did not like this because he ended up slapping the camera right out of his fan's hand. Thankfully, a different fan got it on tape. First off, that's just rude. Second, that's so embarrassing for the fan. Now I understand that celebrities are constantly being followed by the paparazzi or fans, so maybe he was just agitated. Or maybe he needed to get back to his hotel ASAP. Like maybe he was just tired or he needed to, you know, go to the bathroom. Who knows? But there are better ways he could have handled this. Slapping a fan's camera to the ground is not one of them. In our ninth spot, we have Leah Michelle. If you have seen my previous video, then you know just how rude Leah Michelle can be. Earlier this year, a former Glee cast member exposed Leah Michelle for being rude to her, and then several other people came forward with similar bad experiences with Leah. Even fans came forward saying that when they met her, she acted disrespectful towards them. A fan tweeted, and I quote, I met Leah Michelle once and I told her that I was such a huge fan. And I was obviously pretty flamboyant at the time because I was excited and she responded, yeah, all the gays watch our show, nothing special. And then walked away. I was literally so confused, but I'm so glad people are waking up to how rude she is. Are you kidding me? How can she be that rude to her fans? I just, I just don't get it. In our eighth spot, we have Rachel Ray. On television, Rachel Ray is bubbly and seems like a warm and friendly person. But according to a number of fans, she is quite the opposite. One fan attending a taping of her cooking show said that during the taping, Rachel would be rude to her staff, was annoyed with the audience, and was acting ungrateful. Another fan stayed outside side of the filming location for the show waiting for Rachel to come out. According to the fan, and I quote, when Rachel came out to greet the audience, she was cold, even seemingly annoyed that she had to do the show. She complained, she rolled her eyes, and was not at all the perky, spunky personality we have come to know on her show. There you have it, exposed. In our seventh spot, we have Jerry Seinfeld. What's up with that? <laughs> I swear, this has to be one of the most embarrassing and awkward celebrity moments, maybe of all time. So back in 2017, Jerry Seinfeld was being interviewed on the red carpet for a night of laughter and song event. During the interview, super fan Kesha comes up to Jerry, introduces herself quickly, and then says, can I give you a hug? In which, he shuts her down. But Kesha is really persistent. She goes, please, just a little one? each time shutting her down. She then walks away heartbroken. I mean, this dude was the star of the B movie. I'd want a hug too. I'm I'm just kidding. I know, Seinfeld. Anyway, after she walks away, Jerry and the interviewer awkwardly laugh. I just cringe so much watching it. I mean, he wasn't necessarily rude about it, but just the whole encounter was really uncomfortable. In our sixth spot, we have Chevy Chase, who apparently has a bad reputation on sets. It's been said that he is difficult to work with and disrespectful to his coworkers. So it's not that shocking that he's also rude to his fans. In fact, he slapped one of his fans super hard when he first met them. The fan in question being actor and comedian Rob Hubel. He was so excited to meet Chevy, but he ended up slapping him so hard that he said he saw red. He then tried to make a joke out of it saying, can't you see I'm talking to somebody kid? Now some people have defended him saying like, oh he's just joking around, and Rob hasn't looked too much into it. But others find that extremely wild. Like imagine that, slapping a dude you don't even know right across the face and then being like, haha just kidding, got ya. 
We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Avril Lavigne. I absolutely love Avril, like I was a huge fan growing up. It's safe to say that my whole tomboy skater phase was thanks to her. Anyways, fans in Brazil were super disappointed after going to Avril's meet and greet in 2014. According to the fans who paid 400 US dollars to meet Avril, they weren't allowed to hug or touch her and they had to literally stand a good distance away from her. So all the photos from that event look super awkward, like they're smiling beside Avril who's six feet apart from them. I mean, good job practicing social distancing before COVID, but yeah, they couldn't hug her or even high five her. Now, Avril does suffer from Lyme disease, so I'm wondering if she did this because she has a weakened immune system and didn't want to take any chances catching anything. I really don't know, but I can't imagine paying that much to meet a celebrity and not even being able to hug them. In our fourth spot, we have Rami Malik. First off, he's an amazing actor, so props to him, but there is one very, very awkward fan encounter. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that you all know what I'm talking about and have seen this video. I mean, it went viral after a fan posted it on Twitter. In this video, a fan asks Malik if he could say hi to her friends. He says, no, but we can take a photo. Then he realizes that the whole time he was being recorded and it's just, it's hella awkward. Can you say hi to my friends? Can no, but we can take a picture. Oh, sorry. Is that all right? Yep, thank you. Well, that's a video. This is just another very cringy fan celebrity encounter. So like I said, this video went viral because of how fast Malik shut the fan down. In the end, he did apologize and said, and I quote, I am who I am and people can interpret that how they want, but I love the fans. I wouldn't be here without my fans and I try to take as much time as possible. Sometimes when you've been traveling around the earth a couple times, you try to just be protective of your time as a human being and I'm finding it quite funny and I think maybe I'll have some fun with it on Ellen tomorrow. He told another outlet and I quote, I am happy to take photos with anyone, I just want to be aware of what people are doing in the moment. When someone films you automatically, it's a bit intrusive. And honestly, I totally get that, but the video is undeniably awkward. In our third spot today, we have Drake Bell. Earlier this year, it was revealed that Drake Bell grew and took advantage of one of his young fans. The fan said that the two met when she was 12 and she was his biggest fan. The two would talk casually and she claims he would give her advice and they maintained a friendship. When she turned 15, Drake's intentions changed and he started calling her hot. The two would exchange inappropriate messages and pictures. In 2017, they met up and she pleasured him. She continued on saying that he made her feel so loved so that he could manipulate her. Later, she realized that what they were doing was wrong, but she was scared to leave him. She felt trapped. As a result of this girl's statement, Drake was exposed for and his inappropriate behavior. He was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after pleading guilty. In our second spot today, we have Adam Levine. According to a number of fans, Adam Levine, lead singer of Maroon 5, treats his fans pretty awful. Apparently, he has a habit of showing up late to his own concerts and performances, and one time, he even got mad at a crowd when they were just singing along to his songs. I mean, it's a concert. They're going to sing along. Nobody just stands silent and still at concerts. But that's not even the worst part. One fan said that one time she met Adam Levine and asked for his autograph. His response was, and I quote, I don't give autographs to ugly chicks. That is absolutely disgusting. I honestly just, I can't believe it. And in our number one spot today, we have Sean Penn. So we got Tobey Maguire who slammed a fan's camera to the floor, and now we have Sean Penn who grabbed a fan's phone and smashed it to the ground. So back in 2013, Sean was in a fancy hotel in San Francisco when a fan took a picture of him on his phone. But the fan didn't realize that the flash was on. So Sean realized that someone took a photo of him and he flipped out. He then grabbed the fan's phone and slammed it to the ground. He then proceeded to yell at the fan telling him to get out, and if he didn't, he would make the fan eat his phone. I mean, Sean has been known to come after paparazzi, like there's videos of him physically kicking them, but in this case, it was just a fan who probably is no longer a fan.